Hello students, welcome to class two of your module five. So in this session, we are going to discuss about uh, some not so important, okay, but uh, the kind of questions can be asked from this topic. So those are display list, definitions and execution of display list, fonts in GLUT, and finally, programming given event driven input. So, first, let us see this display list. The original architecture of a graphic system was based on a general purpose computer or host machine that is connected through a digital to analog converters to a CRT. Okay, so we know that uh, in a typical von Neumann architecture. Okay, that is nothing but we call it as a the, the normal computer system. Okay, but whenever we are talking in terms of graphics, we call it as a graphic system that is based on the, the normal computer. Okay, normal computer means uh, it consists of uh, money input output devices, CPU. Okay, and in that CPU, it consists of a memory unit, control unit, and uh, arithmetic and logical unit. Okay, these are the very typical. Uh, the components that normally we can see in the von Neumann architecture. The computer would send out the necessary information to redraw the display at a rate sufficient to avoid noticeable flickering. So here, whenever we want to see an image continuously on our screen, we have to we have to refresh the the, the display content means. Uh, each and every time we have to refresh the content so that we can get the image without any flickering. Okay, so if you see this particular figure, okay, this depicts about the early graphic system in which a host was there. A typical host is the about our computer system. That computer system is connected with the digital to analog. The converter will be there. Okay, so its job is to convert the digital signal into analog signal. Okay, we know that uh, digital signals are nothing but uh, zeros and ones. Okay, analog signals are nothing but uh, a kind of sinusoidal signals. Okay, that is we call as electrical signals. So that will be get converted. Okay, and that will be sent to the monitor so that uh, we can see the uh, output on this monitor. That is nothing but the electron beam. Okay, that is going to strike on the uh, phosphor coated screen. Okay, so here. At that time, computers were slow and expensive. So the cost of keeping even a simple display refreshed was prohibitive for all but a few applications. What it, this statement indicates here is, as we know that uh, as we go few decades back, okay, uh, we can see that uh, those computers were very slow okay, as, compared to the, as compared to the current computers and those were expensive also. Okay, that means the cost of a single uh, means if you compare the price between the the five twelve MB RAM okay at that time and the four GB or eight GB of RAM of today's time okay you can see that uh, uh, it is so cheap now we are getting very in, uh, we are getting high uh, high capacity the computer components in a very cheap uh, price okay but as we go few years back you can see that the size the capacity of the particular component was very less okay along with that it was very expensive also okay so because of this uh, the the refresh rate maintaining the refresh rate was very typical and it is very hectic job at that time okay so as a solution to this the display processor architecture was built it uses the special purpose computer called display processor Okay, so to uh, get a flicker free image so that we can perform the high refresh rate. Okay, so they, ha they have introduced a display processor architecture. The job of this uh, display processor architecture is to completely focus on the display side. Okay, so what is the what why this uh, display processor architecture plays very important role here is assume that assume that uh, you are performing some graphical uh, operations. Assume that you want to draw a triangle. So yes, in the host side, you have written the program and that you have sent to the uh, digital to analog 
component. So it is going to convert that digital form of triangle into the analog form of triangle and that will be displayed on the screen. But within a fraction of second, it, it will display for a fraction of second okay again it will come back to its original state means again and again the host should display that same content okay so that you can see that the continuous uh, continuous uh, motion of that uh, image okay on your screen means you want a flicker free image okay because here this host is keep on it, it is always busy to display the same triangle whenever it want to do any other job it can't do because it is completely busy with, busy with that displaying the triangle so here host is keep on computing okay it is taking the input from the program and it is keep on computing okay and it is keep on sending to the digital to analog converter signal uh, converter and that is going to continuously display to the screen so here host is never become idle it is always busy with the particular task so to avoid such kind of situations okay they have introduced display processor architecture Okay, has the name itself says that uh, it is an architecture, okay, which is completely and mainly meant for to perform some display operation. The display processor had a limited instruction set, most of which was oriented towards drawing primitives on the CRT. Okay, you can see that uh, here, uh, as you are already studying this uh, uh, instruction set in your. Uh, uh, um, SS and OS, okay, that is system software, okay. So here the display processor consists of very limited instruction set, okay. So and they are mainly oriented, they are mainly focused on only drawing the primitives on the CRT. Apart from that, they are not going to do any other thing. It means they only do the drawing operation, they won't do any arithmetic and logical operations. The user program was processed in the host computer resulting in the compiled list of instructions that was then sent to display processor where the instructions were stored in a display memory or display file or display list. So what we are doing here is we are avoiding the burden on this particular host machine. So here if assume that I want to draw the triangle. Yes, I can draw the triangle. Okay. So here that will be given to the display processor and display processor is going to process on it and once the processing is happened okay it is going to store it in a display list okay so display list is nothing but it is a kind of a list or a kind of file so in which it is going to store all those primitives that it want to display okay based upon the request so it will keep it in the display list okay and whenever the user want that that particular primitive it is going to fetch from the display list and it is going to show it on the CRT monitor. So when this display processor perform this job, this host machine will become idle. Okay. So that it can perform some, any other operation. Okay. So in the, uh, in this particular scenario, with the help of this display processor architecture, rather than drawing only the single triangle, now I can perform any other operations also. Means I can draw the triangle, rectangle, polygons, lines, whatever that uh, primitives that you want to draw, you can draw. Okay, just to, you have to, it is going to execute in the host machine and that will be stored in a display processor. Okay, means the display processor also performs some operation on it and it is going to store it in a display list. Okay, based upon the request, it is going to display on the CRT. So here, with the, whenever we are performing the refreshing operations, like it is keep on fetching from the display list and it is not going to put any burden on the host. So with the help of the dis display processor, we can maintain the flicker free image, we can maintain the refresh rate and we can keep the host in the idle position so that we can perform some, idea, some uh, any other task. So for a simple non-interactive application, once the display list was sent to the display processor, the host was free for other tasks and the display processor would execute its display list repeatedly at a rate sufficient to avoid the flicker. Okay, so you can see that normally for the simple non-interactive application, non-interactive application means in which it already some set of instructions is already written in the program, the user does not have any kind of privileges to change the the change the behavior of the program okay 
behavior of the program is he can't use the any kind of uh, input devices okay uh, on its uh, on that application he, he has already written the program and it is executing that's all so that kind of scenarios in which the display list always sent to the display processor okay so that host will become free okay of its task so that it can perform some any other task so the display processor would execute its display list repeatedly okay it depends upon the user requirement okay it will keep on uh, displaying okay the content what the uh, at a sufficient rate of uh, rate of refresh two ways of sending the graphical entities to the display there are two types of uh, uh, modes will be there that is immediate mode and retained mode what is this immediate immediate mode has a name which says that it is very immediate okay it won't wait for anyone which is we normally call it as a fundamental mode as soon as the program executes a statements that it defines the primitive that primitive is sent to the server for display and no memory of its retained in the system means whenever the program execute any primitive statement okay primitive statement means assume that one command primitive command that is gl underscore lines okay so that will be sent to the uh, server okay so that primitive is sent to the server for display means server is going to process on it okay and uh, there is a no need of memory okay for retaining in the system retaining in the system means in the client side okay it is not necessary to remember all those things okay you have, have the program and in the program the primitive will be there and that primitive will be sent to the server here the server is nothing but the graphics server okay so whose job is to perform the execution operation once it is executed that will be sent back to the client okay and it is going to uh, give the all the requested uh, uh, data to back to the client to redisplay the primitive after clearing the clearing of the screen or in a new position after an interaction the program must redefine the primitive and then must resend the primitive to the display in this immediate mode once it is displayed it is over okay again if you want to display again you should send back to the server okay again the client should send back that particular primitive to the server server is again going to process i think it is sent back to the client okay so it is a immediate mode okay whenever there is a request then only the, the service can be granted okay so that type of mode we call as a immediate or fundamental mode the next one is retained mode graphics so it uses the display list okay so here this immediate mode or the fundamental mode does not use any kind of display list but in the retained mode it uses the display list objects is defined once and then its description is put it in the display list the display list is stored in the server side and redisplayed by a simple function call issued from the client to server so has the name itself says that it is a retained mode means a kind of a memory will be there some kind of storage will be there okay so normally it is going to use the display list here whatever the object that you want to draw that you have to define okay so that will be defined okay with its all the descriptions all its descriptions means that particular object position okay the orientation colors okay the thickness all such kind of attributes that descriptions can be put it in the display list and that display list is stored in the server side okay and that is redisplayed by the simple function call issued from the client to server means assume that uh, already uh, that all the display list okay all the primitives are already stored in the display list in the server side now the client is just gives the input okay that's the thing but i want to draw the triangle okay so i and it he is going to specify the the vertices for that triangle okay and along with that he is also specify the colors so okay that is in the form of a function okay that is going to be sent to the server side server is going to uh, server is going to understand that function call okay by uh, comparing with its prototypes okay which is stored in that display list okay if both the prototypes are matched then all the vertices that what you have specified okay that will be taken okay what type of primitive that you want to see that will be taken what type of colors that you want to see okay everything it is going to mix together and it is going to display on the it is going to process and it is going to send back to the client so that client can see on its on his uh, crt monitor 
What is the advantage of this retain mode here? It reduces the network traffic. Yes, because of this display list, we are not keep on asking. Okay, there is a kind of a, um, there is a the burden. Okay, that burden what we have seen in the immediate mode that can be reduced. Okay, in this retained mode, it allows the client to take advantage of any special purpose graphics hardware that might be available in the graphics server. It is not necessary that. Uh, each and every time our graphics client, the client side, client host must have all the kind of uh, essential uh, uh, processing components. Okay, if he's having just a simple processing unit and uh, display devices, that is sufficient. Because if whenever you want any special purpose graphics hardware, okay, that then you can rely on the server side. What is the disadvantage? Here, use of display list required the memory on the server side. Yes, has. We know that uh, the display list is a kind of file, a kind of buffer. Okay, so if assume that the client is performing very huge amount of uh, operations at that time, our display list size should be it should increase. Okay, and uh, if if multiple clients are connected to the single server, okay, and multiple requests are coming from the clients to the server, and the server should be server should be capable in the position to handle each and every request from every clients so there is an overhead of creating the display list although this overhead often is offset by efficiency of execution of display lists it might not be if data are changing so here multiple here display lists are there in the server side but the problem here is uh, there can be a difficulty with the efficiency with respect to execution of the display list because assume that uh, uh, multiple clients Okay, um, in the same amount of time, if they are requesting the same primitive, okay, for example, everyone is asking the triangle, okay, so triangle, uh, everyone is relied on the triangle operation and they are giving their own entity values, okay, their own uh, attribute values. So, this multiple request on the server, okay, will put burden, okay, so it has to do the same operation, okay, so has the display list size is very limited. Okay, so a kind of a delay, okay, a, a kind of jitter can be observed in the network side. The next one, definition and execution of display list. So we can, with the help of OpenGL uh, command, we can define the display list and we can execute the display list. Here we are going to use a command called GL new list and GL end list. Okay, so this particular command is very similar to that of uh, our GL begin and GL end. Okay, but that GL begin and GL end is used for to, to plot the primitives. Okay, but this GL new list and GL end list is used for creating the display list. Display lists are defined similarly to geometric primitives. There is a GL new list at the beginning and GL end list at the end with the contents in between. Same as that of our GL begin, GL end. Okay, we always put, we always uh, use some conditions that is nothing but the first GL begin. After that, some content means all the uh, GL vertex, GL color that we can use. Then finally, we have to use the GL end. In the same sense, in the display list also. Whenever we are beginning with the display list, first we have to use the GL new list. After that, we can put all the contents that we want to that we want to include in the display list, and finally we can include the GL end list. So, which indicates that it is the end of that particular list, and we can't use any kind of nested list here. Each display list must have unique identifier. That is an integer that is usually macro defined in the C program via hash defined directive to an appropriate name for an object in the list okay so we can see here whenever we want to draw any object that object is having its own identifier okay because the display list can understand only the identifiers okay but for naming purpose we can use the uh, some words also but ultimately that can be assigned to the some numbers Okay, because display list, uh, you will never remember in the form of, okay, triangle, uh, lines, uh, the next one, uh, 
quartz, polygon, it won't remember like that. It is always remember with the integer format. Okay, for example, if I want to draw the triangle, okay, so for that a triangle, its number will be one. And next one, polygon, number will be two. Then next to lines, that is three. Okay, line underscore strip, that is four. Okay, so uniqueness can be maintained. One, two, three, four. So according to the number, we are going to uh, we are going to use the uh, primitives. So here I want to draw a red box and place that information in the display list. So here the box. Okay, so box is defined with the some uh, integer. Okay, but here this integer should be unused. No one should be used. Okay, so it is not necessary that you should use one only. Okay, you can use any numbers also, but that number will not has not been used previously. Next one, GL new list in that box. What is the box? Box is nothing but that's nothing but the value one. Okay, this is the primitive that I want to draw. Primitive means it is an object that I want to draw. Then next we are going to use some flag called GL underscore compile. Okay, we will see what is GL underscore compile. Then we are going to use okay the uh, the the description for that box that is GL begin GL underscore polygon. Then next the color for it, then the vertices for that particular box. Once it is written, the next, once you're, then next you have to end this begin. Once this begin is ended, the next you have to end this GL new list. This is the order we always maintain. Here the flag GL underscore compiled tells the system to send the list to the server, but not to display its contents. If an immediate display of the contents is required, then gl underscore compile underscore and underscore execute flag is used. Means this gl underscore compile is a kind of uh, operation or a kind of a flag operation in which you are just compiling and you are sending to the server side. Okay, means, uh, sorry, uh, the flag gl underscore compile test the system to send the list to the server. Okay, means in the server, it is going to compile but it is not going to display its content back to the client side. Okay, so it is not a kind of immediate mode. It is a kind of uh, what we can say a kind of a uh, retained mode. Okay, it is there with the server side. Okay, whenever there is a request from the client, then when it is going to display. But if an immediate display or the fundamental display of the contents is required, okay, means uh, yes, you have sent some uh, functions to the server. Okay, uh, then you want the immediate immediate result okay so at that time you are going to use this gl underscore compile and underscore execute flag okay so it is a kind of immediate mode of operation whenever you are given whenever you are given the uh, input to the server okay server is uh, will execute immediately and it is going to give back to the client the next one gl call list okay so once you are defined all this uh, the primitive description about this uh, uh, red box in with the help of new list next you have to call that list okay so that your that list you have to call with the help of its identifier so to indicate that which primitive that you want to see on the display so draws the box on the server each time invoked the present state determines which transformations are applied to the primitives in the display list so uh, here it is just calling that particular identifier identifier means that particular uh, object so that you want to see okay it is depends upon the user okay if the multiple primitives are present okay box is there then uh, uh, then book is there then bottle is there okay such kind of objects are already defined okay with the help of gl new list and gl end list but which one you want to see that depends with the help of call list so it is going to invoke okay from the server side okay and it is that will be invoked by the client okay and he can see that content on his monitor there may be undesirable and unexpected effects due to the possible state change within the display list so because of this uh, uh, small list okay all this uh, file display file okay sometimes we may get the undesirable and unaffected uh, unexpected effects Okay, because uh, it depends upon the task that we are going to give to the server and if the multiple clients are there to the server then server will get busy with the uh, to satisfy each and every operations 
so hence we may not get the the desired output that what we are expecting so the exist safeguard is used to two stacks provided by the open gl that is master, mat, matrix stack and attribute stack so in the matrix stack we are using the two operation that is push matrix and pop matrix so i have already discussed about this push matrix and pop matrix whenever we are performing any kind of transformations on our objects okay we can retain their we can retain their um, positions okay we can retain their status also so that can be done with the help of matrix stacks okay so it consists of two types that is a push matrix and pop matrix the next we have a attribute stack again here also we have two types that is a push attrib and pop attrib here it talks about the transformations and it talks about the attributes that's the thing about the thickness colors and all those things okay the next one is a fonts in glut so here glut provides a few raster and stroke fonts okay what is a font font is the thing but the different character okay the style of the character different characters okay that you want to see on your monitor so in the open gl not only you can draw the objects that's the thing but the lines line loop triangle polygons etc you can even though you can uh, display the texts also okay so it, that is done by the glut library means the glut library is completely having the privilege to display the display the text format uh, output so in that again we have two types that is raster fonts and stroke fonts first we will see that what is a stroke fonts okay we can access the single character from monotype monotype means a single type or even the spaced font by the function call okay so even the spaced means uh, uh, for example if i want to display v c t okay so i have to use each and every individual characters how i can achieve that first i have to use this function that is glut stroke character the next glut underscore stroke underscore mono underscore roman okay this is nothing but a kind of style okay a kind of style that we are going to use and the next one int char okay int char is nothing but the the character that you want to display for example v okay it's ascii value okay it's ascii value we have to mention okay so here uh the glut stroke mono roman the next one ascii value so it is going to display the v okay once you execute again if you want to see if you want to see the c okay uh then again you have to call this function then again you have to give the value for the c then next if you want to see e okay again call it okay similarly if you want to see the t okay again call this function and uh, along with that the value for that t okay ascii value for t so with the help of uh, this uh, stroke character okay we can display the text but the problem with this one is you have to call this uh, glut stroke character multiple times okay and it depends upon the the word word size okay if your word size is increasing then multiple times you have to call this stroke character the glut stroke roman provides the proportionality spaced characters means it is going to maintain the proportionality means the equal space between the each and every characters in addition each invocation of glut stroke character includes translation to the bottom right of the character box to prepare for the next character means if you return the v okay the next again it is at the bottom it is going to create some space okay a kind of translation okay some distance it is going to maintain after that c can be drawn okay once the c has been drawn again some space can be maintained that is a translation means the cursor is moving okay next it is going to place the e again space then t so in that respect it is going to maintain the the proportionality okay the distance proportionality between the characters so next the scaling and translation effects of the open gl state so here we should be careful to use the push matrix and pop matrix to prevent the undesirable positioning of objects defined later in the program means in this stroke characters okay we are going to use this uh, translation scaling and uh, uh, rotation okay kind of transformation operations 
okay hence we have to use this push matrix and pop matrix so that we can maintain the originality of the characters okay because the what is a stroke okay stroke character stroke fonts are nothing but these are the fonts okay which are completely relied on the the graphical entities okay the graphical entities of the um uh means the that particular for example if you want to uh, see okay for example if you want to draw the a okay a is nothing but what it consists of uh, three lines one two and three okay similarly b one line then one semicircle and another semicircle so it is a kind of a, a object descriptions okay and we know that on the objects we can perform the transformations that is a rotation the translation and scaling so this character this stroke fonts is completely relied on the a kind of geometrical entities so hence we have we are using the scaling a translation and rotations and whenever we are using these transformations okay we have to maintain the status of that um, operation that is with the help of push matrix and pop matrix we can maintain the the status of that object the next one is a raster fonts raster fonts are nothing but colored fonts okay and they are completely dependent on the the pixel form okay means a uh, pixels and in the pixels we can't perform the translation rotation and scaling just to be how to interchange means uh, if this is the pixel okay if assume that this is the pixel but i want to see the pixel on this side what i can do i can just uh, turn off this pixel and i can turn on this pixel okay uh, but we are feeling that a kind of a translation has been happened okay but this transformations can't be applied on this raster raster fonts that can be applied only on the stroke fonts raster and bitmap bitmap is thing but uh, two bits will be used to map the characters that is a that is either 0 or 1 0 for black one is for white okay and combination of means it is going to become gray so we are going to use glut bitmap character the next glut bitmap 8 by 13 this is the this is the size of that particular uh, character that is 8 is to 13 pixel rectangle okay and next one is the character that you want to display okay here you can go for any size that is a glut bitmap 9 by 15 okay the next one glut bitmap times uh, roman 10 Okay. there are so many uh, what font style it is available okay so you have to use so but in the stroke in the stroke uh, character you can't use that that okay you have to whenever you want to increase or decrease the size of the character then you can go for scaling translation and rotation etc but in the raster or bitmap characters okay you have to use this predefined sizes positioning of bitmap characters is considerably simpler than positioning the stroke characters is because bitmap characters are drawn directly in the frame buffer and are not subject to geometric transformations whereas stroke characters as i said okay this uh, stroke characters are completely dependent on the geometrical transformations but but this uh, bitmap characters does not rely on the geometrical transformations it depends upon the pixels hence we can easily draw on the frame buffer and next one if you want to place a particular character okay in some particular location then you can go for raster position this raster position identifies next raster primitive that you want to place it can be set using the gl raster pause okay then here asterisk indicates that are you giving the integer values are you giving the floating values are you giving the double values and it is always takes the either two parameters or three parameters that is two parameters for two dimension and three parameters for three dimension that is x y or z okay x y or x y z okay so that it is going to take the next if the characters have the different widths we can use the glut bitmap width okay uh, that is a font and characters will be there that function return to the width of the particular character means if you want to specify the particular width okay for the particular text then you can go for this glut bitmap width okay so this is the uh, the types of uh, fonts in the glut library 
okay it let always provides us uh, two types of library uh, two types of funds that is a raster funds and stroke funds then programming event driven input okay so here we are going to use uh, use pointing devices okay so as the name itself says that a programming okay a program will be there and in the programming you are using the event driven event driven input means uh, uh, some kind of input that you are going to give to the program and it is going to uh, it is going to create some kind of events okay so because based upon that events the program behavior is also get change how we can do with the help of the first one is using the pointing devices there are two types of events that are associated with the pointing device one is a mouse move movement and the one is mouse passive move event in the move event is generated when the mouse is moved with the one button is pressed means one button of the mouse is pressed and you are moving the cursor okay so such kind of event we call as a move event so with the help of this uh, move event we can select okay whatever the icon come in that place okay that can be selected okay i hope you have done that is a uh, pressing at someone and uh, dragging that mouse cursor okay so you are going to get uh, some kind of folders that can be get selected if the mouse is moved without a button being held down this event we called as a passive move event means the button of the mouse is not at all pressed simply you are moving the mouse okay uh, mouse cursor here and there okay such kind of uh, move event we called as a passive move event a mouse event occurs when one of the mouse button is either pressed or released okay that multiple times we have discussed that mouse event is always have two states that is either pressed state or released state then next uh, we are going to use the mouse callback function and that can be provided by the glut library that is glut mouse func and our user defined mouse function and here you can see that our user defined mouse function it consists of a uh, wide mouse okay you can use any name for it my mouse your mouse whatever okay uh, just you have to use the name for it and that name should be has given as a parameter to this callback function this user defined function always always takes four parameters that is the button then next state then two coordinates with respect to x and y axis okay so multiple times uh, we have used this uh, mouse functions in the lab program okay uh, i hope you can recall this uh, statements okay this piece of code that we have used in the color cube okay so the button is always always associated with the left button middle or right button okay which one you want you can choose and the state will be either down state or up state based upon this condition okay see when this button is pressed and this state was there then only this operation can be seen okay then window events okay not that much okay i want you should go through that here it talks about the reshape function okay and multiple times we have talked about the reshape function okay it always takes the two parameters that is a width and height okay and viewport we have discussed gl matrix mode in that we have seen gl underscore projection and model view i have talked about gl old identity then this gl ortho 2d okay this is the prototype that we have used here okay yeah, sorry it is not a prototype okay it is a command only okay so based upon the new width and height that is going to given as a input to this gl ortho 2d the next one is a keyboard event the keyboard func okay is a callback for the events generated by pressing the key whereas the glut keyboard up func is the callback for events generated by releasing the key see normally this glut keyboard func is used for whenever we press the keys means in the down state but if you don't want to see in the down state if you want to see for the up state then you can go for this command glut keyboard up func okay so normally the a keyboard event occurs with the help of ascii code for the key that is generated the event okay uh, so we are going to use the callback function glut keyboard func and the user defined function and the user defined function always takes three parameters that is unsigned character key and the coordinate values x and y okay so it is a case sensitive okay so here which 
key that you are going to press okay if you are pressing the small q okay or caps q then it is going to perform exit and also along with that glut also includes the function that is glut get modifiers that enables the user to define actions using the meta keys such as control alt keys etc okay for example if you want to use some uh, uh, additional uh, function uh, additional keys that is what we call as a meta keys then you can go for a glut get modifiers the next one display function yes we have used this uh, callback function glut display func we have used this glut post redisplay we have used glut idle function okay just to go through that one the next one window management again the glut library plays a very important role to manage the windows so here it can support the multiple windows okay so uh, we can uh, uh, open the multiple windows okay and we can go for sub windows means whenever you open the one window okay and whenever you press any content within that window again it is going to pop up again new window okay so such kind of a parent window child windows that can be maintained so we can open the second top level window that is a second okay well, first one parent is there okay next if you want to create the child window then we can label it as a second window that is the thing but you have to use some identity id equals to glut to create window second window okay so the return integer value allows us to select this window as a current window means whenever we want to see this id okay yes i have created the window that is a second window but now the the uh, first window is already there and second window is also there but the first window always comes in front of the viewer and the second window is it is hidden back to the uh, first window so if you want to bring that second window to the front side okay then you have to use the glut set window okay glut set window with the id so it is going to put that window in front of the viewer we can make this window have the properties different from those of other windows by invoking the glut init display mode before the glut create window means whenever you are using the multiple windows okay for each and every different windows you have to use this glut init display mode that is glut underscore rgb glut underscore single glut underscore depth okay all those things that you can mention for each and every individual windows each window can have its own set of callback functions because callback specifications refer to the present window okay because each and every windows are having their own callback function that is they have their own callback functions like glut display function glut keyboard function glut mouse functions okay because all those callback functions are associated with that particular uh, that particular window okay so in the next class we are going to discuss about menus so here i am going to stop thanks for listening